Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect today. We're jumping back into some more All the Mod 7 to the Sky. Hope you guys are ready. So today we're going to be getting a little bit lazier with AE2. That's right. There's a mod in here called Lazier AE2. And well, while it has some sophisticated crafting recipes, it is called lazier ae2 as it will have an end result of making some things easier to craft within this mod and easier to automate so i think you know if these mods are in here might as well use them instead of going through the old-fashioned way of automating an inscriber how about we go ahead and we set these up and well we can set up a uh, a very simple etcher and instead of going through a complicated process we can just feed straight items right in and skip an entire process in itself and just go straight to the processor this seems fantastic right look how easy these crafting recipes are um to to make so for example the logic processor the diamond like the certus it's so easy also this has an uh, an aggregator that uh, allows us to do the the sand and uh dust and and go straight to duplicating our crystals like it doesn't get any better than that. We can have infinite Certus Quartz right here. Like, just with the dust and converting this back into dust. I mean, it's infinite. It, it, it literally is the greatest thing. Now, getting into this mod is a whole other story in itself because of its crafting recipes. First things first to get into this mod, I do have to go the old-fashioned route and actually make some crystal growth accelerators. Um, believe it or not, this is uh, is necessary. Um, the reason is, is because I'm going to need to get some power off of this. I think I'm going to set it up right over here for right now. We need some water. So let's grab a bucket. And hopefully we can get some water real quick. The water is going to go in here. I think I have some Bluex cables. And I should be able to just connect directly to the power source. Not to our network, but to our power source. And just give these power. That's all it needs, is it needs a little bit of juice. It needs the juice. So I'm gonna juice this up. You're gonna see all kinds of cool particle effects sprouting all over the place. Uh, but the thing that's gonna happen is uh, we need to take this. We need to make some resonating dust. Um, and to do that, we can just toss it directly into water. So we need two of them, right? So skystone, diamond, and ender dust, all very simple to get. Toss it into water, we'll get some of this dust. And then this dust needs to be combined with some sand and we get ourselves a seed, just as if we were getting into this mod by itself. So the seed is gonna go in here. So let me go ahead and get all of that prepped up. So I have to show this because this is just like water crafting. This is so fun. Look, I toss that in there and it's all going to explode into the items that we need, uh, which is pretty nice. By the way, this uh, it can also be done for Fluix as well. So uh, that same, it's just like another mechanic. Now you don't need these growth accelerators, but all I have to do is take some sand. Hopefully we got some, actually I'll, I'll grab some out of here. Sand to the rescue. And this is going to make two, or I guess it only does one. So we have an entire stack of these seeds. Now the good thing is, is you can toss these as a stack and these are going to just grow over time. Normally they take 20 minutes, but this should speed this up a whole lot faster. I don't know the exact time, but look, they've already reached their first stage of growth. You can see they're at 40 something percent. So yeah, if you left them in water normally, it's literally going to take 20 IRL minutes. In this case, they're almost done. Like that, it's taking less than a minute, I think, or, or right at a minute with just four growth accelerators. And you could technically have more than those. Yeah, and they're done. We have the resonating crystals that we're going to need. Now moving forward, things are gonna get a little bit more complicated with this mod, as we have to dive into something special that is a part of Applied Energistics. So right here is a universal press. This is what we need to make this parallel circuit. Now the universal press also has some really cool characteristics, as you can just put any item in with it and it'll generate the circuit that is needed for this. So uh, instead of using five different ones, you can just place this in one and just feed it the item you need and bam, it's gonna produce it. Another quick way of automating if you really wanted to. 
But I want to go a step further. So to make this, we actually need a singularity from Applied Energistics. To get that, we need a 64K drive, and we're also going to need a matter condenser, and we're going to need to feed it some sort of matter so that way we fill this 64K storage component. And we should be able to fill it pretty quickly with just cobblestone. Now again, this is gonna be pretty straightforward. I have all of this stuff made up. So we have our matter condenser. I'm gonna use a cobblestone tier, uh, tier three gen. And then I need to put this in here. And then I need to tell this, let's see, with this hooked in, is that not, uh, we need to set this to this. So, we need to condense this into a singularity, and so, yeah, I might need to upgrade the cobble gin a little bit more. That is just not going to cut it. We do, we do need 256,000 items to make a single singularity. And there we have it. This is the highest tier cobble gin that you can make, and... Ah, now that's going a lot faster. That's more like it. Now, while that's processing up, I need to work on another thing that is called Fluix Steel Ingots. I still don't know why they call this mod literally lazier AE2 when it takes so much to get all this stuff crafted up. But this Fluix Steel Ingot uh, requires you to make a matter infuser. Thankfully, this is, uh, I don't know if this is the only thing this is used for. Oh no, it looks like this is a alloying machine of some sort. So the good news is, is we should be able to easily make this. Um, so this is also gonna require uh, carbionic fluix dust. Wow, which is coal dust mixed with silicon and fluix. Man, there's, there's a lot to this, but we do need this, it's very specific. Thankfully, all this is actually easily craftable for the most part. Uh, looks like the cable and the, this right here is a modular uh, assembler. We're gonna be use, utilizing that eventually because I am going to be getting into auto crafting and showing you guys how that all works. So that's actually a part of the, um, the auto crafting mechanic that we'll be getting into. So there we go. There's our first machine made from lazier AE2. For some reason, this requires FE instead of the applied energistics. So, uh, I don't know. That's a thing, but, uh, here we have this set up. Ooh, it's got a night. Ooh, I like this. And this actually looks very reminiscent of another mod. Hmm. So all I have to do is get all of the powders together. So I need these materials here, uh, but I need to make this first. Oh, we can just do this in here as well. Instead of crafting it by hand, apparently. Is there two recipes? There are two recipes. This one's just a bit ch cheaper on us. Looks like the best way to crush coal is inside of my mechanical squeezer. It's actually kind of nice. Boop, boop, and boop. And there we go. <laughs> Following. How close are we here? Oh boy, this is gonna take a while. And we are so close, boom, right there, singularity. Yes, and this is just gonna continue. Um, I did speed this up by adding two more cobble gins, and then I'm just using uh, these logic cables as I think they're the fastest cables I have available right now. They are incredibly fast. So, we have the singularity. Uh, what do we do with this? Oh yeah, that's right, we were working towards making ourselves the universal press. Ah, and this requires all of our presses that we currently have to be combined together to make one. This is gonna be kind of nice, actually. Universal press, here I come. There we go, universal press has been made. And, uh, all right, so everything else that we're gonna need, this was needed for the circuit etcher, but I believe it's also needed to make the parallel processor, right? So let's go ahead and make a few of those. You know what'll benefit us a lot? Acceleration cards. Yeah, this is this is really gonna make this a bit faster. I guess I could put five in there. But watch this, this should be so much quicker if I go ahead and make some of this because all you have to do is throw this in here. Oh yeah, that's, that's a lot quicker. Actually, I might make one more just to, to get it going even faster. I think at this point, we're just about ready to go, right? Like I have, Literally, I think everything ready to go. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I literally think I have everything. Uh, boop, there's that. And then uh, circuit etcher, boop, there's that. Uh, Now we can be applied and just sick and lazy. Yeah, or lazier than we were before, something like that. So yeah, automation for this is, it doesn't get any easier than this. All I did was set the input to be this barrel here, the output to be this. 
Um, I think we can just, we can apply the speed upgrades. Oh, are they actually stack in here? Up to eight? You've got to be kidding me. And then we just toss the raw items in and hopefully it works auto extract. Uh, maybe it doesn't auto import, but either way, I could literally just do this. And my goodness, that is so much faster than normal. Oh my. Now, the, the auto input I'm not worried about because when we go to use auto crafting with applied energistics, um, it's going to make our life so much easier uh, because we can just use something like uh, applied energistics will actually push the items into the machine. And then the output can literally be defined making this auto craft so easy or or, or lazier uh, lazier that's that's what we're going with well with all of that out of the way let's go ahead and play around with a little bit of auto crafting i mean we can go ahead and dive right into it by making this as soon as i had some have some sky stone uh how do we get sky stone again um oh yeah there's this or there's an enrichment chamber that's probably the better way so cook up some sky stone blocks and then we should be able to make the controller <laughs> all right giving us more channels 32 channels per side uh and this is definitely going to be enough for us to get a basic auto crafting setup going um so i'm gonna have some units here and then we're gonna have a, a an auto crafting area over here as well uh but thankfully if we connect all of this um, i'm gonna try and drop this actually down one uh but once we get all this connected i'm gonna move all this around we should have had another singularity pop out so there we go um, but I'm going to get this all cleaned up and we're going to get started on applied energistics auto crafting. So one of the main things we are going to need is a CPU. Yes, a CPU. This is how we're actually going to craft with applied energistics. Um, and I have just about everything ready to go here, except I need to convert all of these crafting units into co-processing units. So I can go ahead and do this. this I need eight per. I'm going to be doing two separate ones. And each one is going to contain eight crafting processing units. And then I need to take these two and I need to apply a 16 K. I'm going to go ahead and do 16 Ks. That should be plenty for right now. And uh, let's go ahead and see how we're going to set these up. Uh, they are multi blocks. And so each one of these are going to look just like this. And uh, they're going to be combined in a three by three pattern. So let's go ahead and set them up. Right here, I'm gonna go ahead and place this one, and it is going to look just like this. I'm gonna do two, and so we're also gonna have another one right here. And these are kind of cool looking once they're fully complete. Place this, and now we have a fully completed crafting co-processing unit. And then over here, bam, I have another completed crafting co-processing unit. So we have two, we have two set up. And I believe the, uh, they count as one uh, channel per. So because these are in, in separates, uh, they should count as two separate channels. Um, to get this, let's do at AE. That should pull everything up and, uh, I should be able to use, I'm actually going to use the, uh, the smart cable here to connect in drop down. Cause that's what I'm going with and bam, they are connected. And you can actually see on this particular cable, they are only using two channels, which is nice. Now, the uh, the crafting CPUs are up. These things are quite powerful in their, in their own right and allow for multiple crafts to happen at once. But now we need to make the actual crafting stuff work and get the thing set up that's actually going to do the crafting for us. Now, let's go ahead and tie everything together. Now, I had just set this thing up and then uh, I was told some things have changed. There's been some major changes that I didn't actually know because uh, I am so used to using molecular assemblers. And uh, let's see, I'm so used to using molecular assemblers and if I can find them in here. So let's get this bad boy ready to go. So uh, now crafting and our auto crafting is going to require what used to be molecular assemblers, but now requires ME pattern providers, which I was, I was not aware of. So I had already actually built this and then realized it requires these. So let's go ahead and set up these pattern providers. Um, it's, it's set up the exact same way, except these 
have the slots for our patterns that we're going to be getting into here in a second. So let's go ahead and place these just like this, as you can see, or actually not like this. I'm already doing it wrong. Uh, place them alternating and we are going to go up another level and just like this. And then we repeat the same thing on the other side, just like so. You make sure we're using molecular assimilator, assemblers, which is basically the crafting table. This is like a crafting table, as you can see. And then this is feeding said pattern into said molecular assemblers. Uh, and this is our multi-block, just like this. Now, um, because this is eight channels, once we connect to it, I have to split things up. So right here, we have a, a 32 channels running off of a dense cable, which supports 32. And then these support eight channels. So the eight channels will lead into this. And when that is all said and done, as you can see, it powers on. It says right here, we're using eight of the total 32 channels. And right here is the eight channels. Now I am gonna build another one identical to this one right next to it and uh, hook that in. And then we're gonna talk about some patterns. So with both of those all hooked up, let's go ahead and talk about patterns. So at the moment, I do have a pattern on me, but the crafting recipe for this is this recipe right here. So we can put this into a pattern grid. So this is a pattern encoding ter terminal. And this will allow us to put a pattern in and encode a recipe onto it. And so right here is said recipe. And then right here, you can choose whether or not you want substitutes for items. Uh, as you can see for this recipe, it actually had rotating certus quartz and charged certus quartz, but I only want certus quartz. So if you wanted to allow charged certus quartz, you can allow substitutions, but I have them disabled for right now. So this is the recipe. Now, there's a couple different ways uh, that we can put items in here. We can just manually put them in and they're in, or we can actually make another terminal that will allow us to just insert all of the recipes in, which is way more convenient. So right here is the ME pattern access terminal. And as you can see, we should have 256 available slots because each of these have nine pattern slots and there are uh, 16 of them total, I believe. I think I did the math right. G yeah, no, I did the math totally wrong. It's actually 144 total, uh, which is still a large, a large number. Now, um, before I had that pattern right here, uh, you've seen that I put it in. I can put it in this way by manually putting it in, or I can go ahead and just put it in here. And now it is inside here as well. And it's in one of these. I just, there's no telling which one it's actually in. If, if unless I just randomly stumble upon which one it actually is in. Y yeah, it's right. There it is. It's right there. So as you can see, it does put it into them. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you're in, but it should be ready to auto craft. Now I do want to go ahead and let's see, I can go ahead and craft it. Let's go ahead and craft one right now. And you can see it's going to automatically choose the processors. So let's start. There we go. And then I want to go ahead and auto craft this. So this I will allow substitutions on for the glass. But if I really wanted to make sure that we were only using a certain type of glass, um, I believe we can drag this over and we can actually fill this in. So that way we don't use any other glass other than regular glass. I think that's probably a better, better solution to that, that problem. But yeah, then we can just put it right in here and bam. Now we can auto craft all the patterns we need and start auto crafting all the components for this mod. Ah, yeah, that's going to be a lot of stuff I do off camera. Now, the last part about auto crafting is getting the processing crafting going. So there is another mode you can click right here to go to processing. And what we need to do is we actually need to send with that processing pattern. We need to send the machine items and then expect the machine to send the items back. And so this is where the whole lazier E2 really is going to show up. So for this, let's go ahead and clear this out the way I had it set up, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and have a pattern provider on the top here, and this can be facaded by the way, pattern provider on the top, and then I'm just going to run the cable back over here, and this is going to do the processing for me 
for all of the uh, the little circuits that I need. So this is going to be fantastic. Um, and I'm also going to need something to potentially smelt, uh, which we can worry about later. But for right now, let's go ahead and set this up. So as you can see, pattern provider, and we can send multiple things. On the top, I want the top to be input and output. And I also want auto extract on. And as you can see, we have our upgrades. So let's go ahead and set up a pattern for some of these things. And we should be able to do that over here. So let's go to where our circuits are, which should be right here. And all we have to do is just select our main circuit, go to the circuit etcher. And this is the recipe. It doesn't get easier than that. I went ahead and moved my furnace, which is an incredibly fast furnace. And uh, I can just hook that into there. It's gonna take up another channel. And uh, let's go ahead and get those crafts set up because all I have to do on this one is I have to set these patterns in here. And there we go, those are be made. But now we need to say, hey, make silicon or silicon. That is the one process that we need to make. And that's just as simple as saying, hey, cook this Certus Quartz dust in a process. And this should all work. We're gonna go ahead and test that out. Let's go ahead and put this in here. And uh, let's let's get this bad boy working. Uh, this I had to set to input on and uh, output and make sure the top is set to input and output. And everything should run very smooth with this. Um, so let's just say I don't have any more of my logic processors. Let's go ahead and make 20 of those. It's gonna start. It's gonna start smelting that up and throwing that in there. And oh my gosh, this is the easiest logic, applied logistics logic processing that I have ever set up, ever. It's so easy. It's almost as, as if it's, I'm being lazier. Oh boy. Well, today has been quite amazing. Uh, I got uh, basically every basic part of Applied Energistics set up as far as crafting. Uh, I mean, everything's ready to go. Um, so the future of this pack is definitely becoming a lot brighter. Um, and guys, I hope you enjoyed today, uh, today's episode. I hope you learned something new. If you did, click that subscribe button. That is the best way to support this channel. And of course, I, I would love to thank the sponsor of today's video. And my friend is going to go to Chaos 2 Point. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over in the Discord. Hanging out all the time. And of course, supporting the channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Of course, you know that. And of course, guys, if you're interested in joining the Discord and supporting Just Like Chaos, all you gotta do is go to discord.gg forward slash chosen architect, join the amazing crew over there, and of course, check out the premium memberships section where you gain access to all kinds of cool stuff, including world downloads, and also you get access, or at least one of the tiers and up, uh, the middle tier and up, you get access to the sub servers. Yes, we actually do have reporter servers if you didn't know that. So be sure to check that out, and guys. I will see you in the next episode. Be sure to click that subscribe button, comment down below, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching.